uh, as astronauts, you might think we're like super people and that we never need to eat, or we never need to go to the bathroom, and, uh, or we never need to shower, but... Uh, Here we come, walking down the street. We get the funniest looks from everyone we meet. Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. Yes, they were, and yes, you are. just spoke yesterday with astronaut Glover. Do you guys know who he is? <laughs> hey, is that true? And can you tell me why? You know, the tortilla is quite popular. It's so popular that we have lots of food stored in the area we eat, and they're in boxes and containers and bags. But we have a special container for tortillas that we just keep it full because we're constantly going through tortillas. And He's about to go on the Artemis II mission to circle the moon. I just talked to him yesterday, right? It's just my imagination, President John F. Kennedy had campaigned on a platform of civil rights and support for the space program. Seeing the huge upside of recruiting a black astronaut, the White House gives the Pentagon an order. The Air Force responds fast. There's a young black pilot ready to start training. Captain Edward Dwight Jr. with a top aeronautics degree and 2,000 flying hours under his belt. On July 20th, 1969, Apollo astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Michael Collins, and Slick Johnson orbited the moon. Collins remained in the command module, and Armstrong, Aldrin, and Johnson landed the small lunar module on the moon's surface. Think about what that means in terms of the opportunity, in terms of the future. August 1962. The Air Force announces Dwight is to start phase one of the training, a set of grueling physical tests. While the men were exploring the area, Armstrong received word from mission control that a system malfunction had left them with only enough fuel to take three of the four pioneers safely back to Earth. Dwight graduates in October 63, eighth out of 16 in his class. He's recommended to NASA along with 26 other candidates from around the country. Now it's up to the space agency to make its selection. The obvious fact, I believe, as evidenced by the demographics I've just shared, which is that what happens on that continent will impact the entire globe. Was there a Negro boy in the last 30 or so that you brought here for consideration? Uh, no, there was not. Minutes later, the landing module took off, leaving Slick behind. Are you now, in fact, completely out of the astronaut program? Is there a possibility of you ever being back in? I don't know. I don't have any idea. The median age on the continent of, the, of Africa is 19. By 2050, one in four people occupying space on Mother Earth will be on the continent of Africa. Okay. In charge of training pilots to recommend to NASA's astronaut program is U.S. Air Force flying ace, Captain Chuck Yeager. 
the first man to break the sound barrier. But Jaeger is skeptical about integrating the program and says so years later in a memoir. Uh, it is definitely less crummy than, say, crackers or the, the flatbreads, but... Uh... Hey, come on, y'all. Yo, that's not funny. That's not funny, man. Come back here. The mission was an otherwise perfect success, and an embarrassed NASA deleted all references to Johnson from its official literature. Tonight, we salute Slick Johnson, the first black man on the moon. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Well, that was cool. That was fun. And it's Joe Biden, and I'm Vice President, and my name is Kamala Harris.